All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming out, New Braunfels, Texas. And welcome to a very merry edition of the Steve and Captain Evil podcast. Welcome your hosts, Steve and Renee Trevino. Renee, Re Renee, actually, she goes, I'm nervous. I go, why are you nervous? She goes, because our friends are here. They all watch it anyway, so they I, know that you're filthy. I also said, I said, once I sit down, I can't get up again, because everyone's going to get a crotch shot. Well, that's, that's Merry Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would like to give it up for the staff here, man. Give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. And by the way, those of you that don't know, Downtown Social is veteran-owned and operated. Our friend Tim's a veteran. Thank you for having us, Tim. We, uh, we were like, okay, how do we want to do this thing? Do we want to just me and you talk for a little bit? And then I said, fuck that. Everybody <laughs> wants to see our stars. Ladies and gentlemen, Jose Trevino from the New York Yankees. <laughs> South Texas is own. Don't stop clapping, he's coming. Your New York Yankee, Jose Trevino! <laughs> What's up? I got a mic. Jose, we got you a drink. Hip, water? hip! Uh, yeah. Ah! My water, my water. That's my your water, water sir. Oh, uh, and I know, I know. Gotta spit this out because I gotta drink that drink. <laughs> Got some Corpus Christi people acting yeah, like Corpus right. Christi people. All my friends in New Braunfels are like, Steve, can we keep them down there, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I know how much of a fan you are of our next guest, Jose, yes. so I will let you introduce him. How about that? Am I on? Am I, am I, uh, is this mic on? Mike, Mike, Mike. All right, cool. Yeah. So I'm a huge wrestling fan, so this is awesome. I know all of you are, too. So with that, I mean, this guy doesn't need no introduction, right? Uh, Bill Goldberg. <laughs> oh, hey, no, it's hard. What up, man? Give me some. <laughs> How, you doing, How you doing, sir? Appreciate it. Thanks for Bill Goldberg. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, there we go. Taking that with me. Hey, hey. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. How about another round of applause for Bill Goldberg? Like there you go. Come on up, buddy boy. Give me a hug, man. <laughs> Bill, buddy, how many times have you heard that fucking song? <laughs> I play it every night when I go in the bedroom with my wife. <laughs> what a lucky lady. And your, yeah, his poor wife's like, again, Bill, again. The sparklers, uh, no, uh, the sparklers hey, uh, too? Hey. You gotta bring out the sparklers? He's got sparklers at the end of the hey, bed. Enough, enough <laughs> emasculating me. I have a uh, special announcement. Before we go on, we have to uh, give something away to somebody very special. Tyler Jackson, where you at? Tyler, where you at, buddy? Welcome home, Tyler. We got something for you, buddy. Welcome home. Tyler is visiting his family, active duty military. Bring up a gift for Tyler. Thank we have a gift sir. for Tyler. Go ahead and bring it up. Thank you very much. Meet the boys. Thank you for your service, man. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Thank you, my brother. We got a, we got a gift for you. Don't go anywhere. Bill, Bill's going to act like Santa Claus tonight. And, uh, ho, ho, ho. Call yeah. my wife that one more time. Yeah, it's all good. Hold that on. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Where's his gift? We have a gift for him. Uh, where's Come on, my, boys. Where's my bring friend? it up. Where's the Here we gift? go. By the way, sir, God bless you, man, and thank you for what you do, my friend. Thank you. It might be in the it's back. coming up it's here somewhere. Back. Somebody's. Where Somebody's is it? Gotta be bringing it. Bill, wasn't it your son in charge of the gifts? No, he's over there eating. He's eating again. Yeah. So, if those of you that don't know, Bill's son also plays baseball for and Bernie, right? Yes, sir. Bernie Champion. Uh, Bernie Champion. Yeah. So make sure you root for Bill's son. I know there's a gift coming. Eight ball, do we have one? Okay, Tyler, go sit down, and when the gift comes up here, I will personally bring it to you. I, nice. By the that? way, yeah. 
Did everybody else get quiet when Bill's like, go sit down? <laughs> go sit down right now. I, I sat down again. I, I go, I, I I'll, I'll, I'll sit down. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. But Bill, we have so many great people here, man. And my friend Ed over there, you know, and it's one of those things, Bill, that, that, you know, the way Bill and I met is our passion for veterans. And, you know, Bill asked me if I would join him with his Purple Heart Project. And, and I joined him, and, and Bill is such a kind, kind soul. You're he wise. said, anything you need, Steve, I will give back. So that's why he's here. So give Bill a round of applause, you know. And, uh, yeah. and then recently, recently I had gone down to South Texas, and, and I did a benefit for the Ronald McDonald House. Yep. And we raised money for the kids, and I met Ed. And then I found out, Ed, how many McDonald's do you own in this area? Twelve McDonald's. This man right here paid $15,000 to come see me in Vegas as a donation for the Ronald McDonald House. Thank you, Ed. Yep. Thank you, buddy. And just like the Dawsons, we can always count on so many people. What did you get him? What, what Santa Claus, what did you give him? I gave him an 8x10 signed photo of Goldberg, whoever That's it? <laughs> That's the gift you picked for our... I didn't pick it. I just handed it to him. I didn't pick it. Wasn't his choice. I may be a played Santa Claus before, but I am Jewish, so, right, you know? Well, yeah, it is... That is kind of blasphemy, right? That means I kept the present, and I just gave him an 8 by 10 Oh, we got we to gotta pull Bill's uh, microphone up. Oh, he gets a Ralph shirt as well. Go get a Ralph shirt. You Make can sure go you pick get, out his shirt. You can go You're pick out your shirt. Get you a shirt. Those yeah, shirts are my, my friend Tyler, go pick out a shirt. The gifts are going to keep coming. Jose. we got all kinds of gifts uh, for our veterans today. Jose. Oh, my turn. What, yeah. is the, what is the biggest difference between South Texas and New York City? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I just start? Like, <laughs> can I jump in on that one? I remember no. Jose. Instead, no, instead, of, instead, of, instead of rats, um, we have... Down no, here. no, they're scrats. So, no. The rats have bred with the rats, and no. they call them scrats. Okay, so I will, I'll, I'll say this. I was driving home one day in New York, and uh, I lived up north a little bit, and I was driving on the side of the road, and I was, I was talking to my, my, my wife, and I was like, I think I just saw a gopher. A gopher? A gopher. <laughs> but then she was like, no, that might be like a dog, and I was like, no way. So I started researching. I was like, are there gophers in New York? There's some, but not where I'm at. <laughs> so the only thing I not in your of, hood. So I, the only thing I think of was a rat. So like that thing was like this big, dude. Probably as big as this speaker right here. Huge. No shit, dude. Freaked me out. And then we saw one one time. It looked at me. It had facial features. It had a cut on its eye too. Like it got a fight. <laughs> I promise, dude. Like, things are <laughs> I said, "What's up, fool?" I was like, "Hey, how'd you know I'm from Corpus?" He's from Corpus, from Robstown. Yeah, I was like, "Man, yeah. how'd you know that?" <laughs> yeah. Or, or in this area, he's from Seguin. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> he's from Seguin. So. Oh, Jose, do you mind giving Tyler one of your autographed baseballs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd there you, you go, there my you friend. Go, There's another yeah. gift. Thank you for your service again, man. There you go. Yep. And Bill, dude, born and raised. Where were you born and raised? I was uh, born and raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, so, Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, we just found that know, out, by the way. Because I went to Oral Roberts. He went to Oral Roberts. So he was like, man, grew yeah, up but right he, there. But he was there way before you. Like a couple decades Dude, before you. a little bit. So Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then... I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the son of, a, uh, uh, of an obstetrician gynecologist and a, via, a, a, pussy con and a concert <laughs> violinist. My mom was a violinist in the Chicago Philharmonic. No kidding. And my dad was a doctor, and look what happened to me. <laughs> there you go. They're so proud. I'm, yeah, they're, they're so, so proud. proud. <laughs> My dad, matter of fact, the first time I played in the NFL for four years, none of you uh, probably NFL. remember NFL. Yeah. Which was the only thing I ever wanted to do as a kid or as an adult. But uh, when I got hurt in the NFL and realized that I wasn't talented enough to play, uh, I had to find another job. And when I came to the conclusion that I was going to be a professional wrestler, I picked up the phone and called my dad, and he hung up on me. Really? And he's like, you're Jewish. You're supposed to be a doctor, a lawyer. No, he knew better than that because I had two older brothers who were football players and baseball. Right, right. So he well, knew, how that, tall is he your knew dad? that wasn't going to happen. How tall is your My dad? My dad was a midget. He was a couple inches taller than you. Just a little bit. 
Bill, keep it up, buddy. Keep I'm it up. I'm saying I'm I'm preparing for the emasculation by hitting you first. Well, yeah, you definitely hit me first. Then. I'm just saying. They do allow midget wrestling. I'm on the they? Goldbergs now, right? So I had. I, oh, I do by the have way, have a couple comedic bones. In I do me. love that you took a break because, by the way, if you watch the TV show The Goldbergs, <laughs> uh, Bill's gonna be in some season, some shows coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Me and the tube socks. <laughs> okay, but how do you find how do you find wrestling? How did I find wrestling? Yeah. Uh, I, I played at the University of Georgia in yep. college, and after we'd win a home game, we'd drive to Atlanta to go out every night, you know, in, in the 90s. Early 90s, Atlanta was the place to be. Not anymore, but in the 90s. Early 90s, Atlanta was the place to That's be. That's where the players play. That's right. Yes. And uh, Ted Turner owned World Championship Wrestling. And I'd go out on the weekends all the time, and I'd see these wrestlers in the bars, and I'd be like, you know what? There's no way in hell that I'm ever going to be one of those guys. <laughs> and lo and behold, look at me now. But uh, I, I, I met a lot of them along the way, and uh, then I went to the Falcons years later, and then I see a lot more of them. And then Kevin Green, who was my roommate at the Rams, God bless his soul, um, it was his idea for me to be a wrestler. He was the first person. He did this Hulk Hogan impression. And he's like, Goldberg, you ought to be a wrestler. And I'm like, dude, there's no way I'm going to do that. There's no way. I play happening. professional football. I try to kill guys for a living. And now you want me to act like I'm killing people in my underwear. People aren't going to believe that because they knew I was Goldberg, right? And so, number one, I couldn't be like Killer the Killer because everybody knew who I was. So I had to go by my name. And then number two, it's like, I can't play football anymore, so why don't I run around in my underwear in front of millions of people and act like I'm hurting somebody? So that, so that was going to lead me to my next question. Like, when you become a wrestler, do you get to go, all right, like, I need to pick my character, You're my outfit, and then you said, well, I'm just doing black underwear, <laughs> fuck it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I <laughs> wanted to be, my deal was is that I play pro football, and so I, I, I had a business sense going in, right? I wasn't some, pardon me, but I wasn't some schmuck who grew up f from two years old wanting to be a professional wrestler. I mean, I wanted to play pro football. You just broke I, somebody's heart. Right I know, now. I'm sorry. Like I said, I said, I'm there, sorry. There's like eight dudes in the I, audience I, I now. Know. Like, Fuck you, that was me. I, I'm just saying that I, I wanted to play football, right? right? And so I was lucky enough to have trained my entire life on something, my physique or whatever, and so I just tried to apply that with all the martial arts that I knew and then what I knew about the business. And so I went into it as a business as opposed to as somebody who wants to see himself on TV. Because the last thing I want and care about is that. I just want to perform. I want to be able to compete somehow. And so my competition in wrestling, though it's, I'm sorry, it's predetermined maybe a little bit. <laughs> right. What do you mean? You didn't go 136 and 0 on... Well, no, that's 176. And there you go. Oh, there you go. asshole. A, Come on, get it right, short, Jose. Those short, were like five different people that I beat 45 times a piece. That's their fault. They should have well, gotten better. You do the math. I just <laughs> screwed up really better. bad. But, but um, I just, I wanted to be, to me, it was a fictitious business, but I took it very seriously because I'm a pro athlete and I do everything a thousand percent. And if I'm going to be some guy running around in his underwear, acting like he's killing people, I'm going to be the best. And so I thought the most entertaining thing for me at that time was Mike Tyson. Because every single time they'd mention his name, they'd introduce him, he'd come to the ring, and you're on the edge of your seat waiting for him to absolutely massacre someone. Right. And you yeah. don't know if it's going to be five seconds or five minutes. And so I wanted to replicate the feeling that Tyson gave his fans with a character that was like throwing Romans to the lions. You never knew if I was going to beat somebody's ass before the bell rang or before or, or you know, five minutes down the road. So I, I just I wanted to keep everybody's attention and I didn't want to come out in Ric Flair gear. I just wanted to be plain, simple. I didn't want to talk. I just well, wanted well, to like run my, through Like guys. Mike Tyson, he would wear the towel, black trunks, black shoes, that take the it. towel off and then just and kill people. That's what I did. Scared the shit out of me, I'll tell you that much. I was like eight years old. <laughs> Thanks, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> Do they make men that big? Yeah, yeah. The fireworks, I don't know how he stood in the sparks, man. The sparks. Oh, did some sparks get your nipples ever? Well, I had to shave. Uh, I had to keep my hair really short. And I went through, like, 
a, one pair of trunks like every three matches because they burn holes in oh, them. Oh, makes sense. <laughs> and so then I'd... We're getting I'd, some real inside shit here. Then I'd inhale the fireworks, <laughs> which was really uh, yeah. good for me. They, I could just picture the... Take poor, care, everybody. I feel bad we'll be for leaving them. here really soon. I feel bad for the poor kid that has to iron your next underwear. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. make sure his underwear are ready. He's Dude, I actually, throw. I would buy fireworks. Hold on, hold up. This, we got to settle this. Because I would buy fireworks and be like, all right, let's try this out. Like, the sparklers. Yeah. And, like, stand in them and be like, no, nah, it's too hot. So I'd freak out and be like, I'll just stand in there. This was some gnarly fire, man. It, it was pretty gnarly. But it, it, helped, it helped get me in the mood. I mean, I'm Goldberg in the ring. I'm Goldberg. I'm just a different part of me. Well, that's you what know. tripped me out about meeting you and, and, and you know, getting to know you and, and seeing how you are with the general public and, and the kind man that you are. I hate everybody. To, fuck them all. <laughs> yeah. But when I watch old highlights of you, old, old highlights, they're on VHS. Yeah, and like 40 years ago. <laughs> no, eight millimeter. Yeah, they're over there doing that. <laughs> Not a drink to that. But you seem like the scariest guy in the world. So. Damn. Can we get a little Goldberg if no. you like, like if you were wrestling Jose Trevino? No, 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 no. Time out, time out. I know, I know. We're trying to raise money tonight. How's that? <laughs> Are you okay? I think I went through the couch. I went. I think I. God, I pulled him. I pulled a muscle. I think I went through the couch. Oh. No, but, uh, but Jose, talking about you, I mean, you're, you're handling 100-mile-an-hour pitches. That's nothing compared to what I just felt on my chest. <laughs> Anybody can do this. So, you see, I flew back there. I almost hit the Christmas tree. You, yeah, you almost hit the, the Hanukkah tree. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it's a Hanukkah bush. Hanukkah bush. My bad, bro. My bad. Uh, I had one of those in college. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I didn't go to college, but I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> High school would have been dirty. I, I, I had to go. It just you know. went right over my head. Yeah. Because dirty has stopped you before. Yeah, you got to talk into the mic, babe. We can. Does yours work? Let me hear. Testing. Okay. It works. Um, but Jose, I, my, one of my favorite stories about you is your entire career shortstop. Yeah. Yeah. Infielder. T infielder. Infielder. So Third base, shortstop. You get drafted. What happens? Um, I go to my locker. <laughs> I heard this story too. <laughs> I, go, I go. To, I go to my locker and. There's a big ass bag there, like huge, big. And I'm like, hey, there's somebody's gear in my locker. And they're like, no, that's your bag. And I'm like, pick it up and put it on the side, start unpacking my stuff. And this guy peeks his head around the corner, like real excited to have me there, which I'm glad he did. And he was like, hey, uh, did you get that stuff in your locker? And I'm like, yeah, someone put their gear in here. Somebody he, put their shit in my and locker. And he's like, he's like, no, 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 that's yours. Have you looked in it? And I'm like, no, it's not my bag. I'm not going to look in it. He's like, no, take a look. So I open it. It's catcher's gear. And he's like, hey, uh, so you're a catcher now, right? And I'm like, no, I'm an infielder. Like, and he's like, no, no, no. Like, you're going to catch. Uh, I'll see you outside in 15 minutes. I'm like, dude, I don't even have a glove. And he's like, you, you have an agent? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, tell him to order you two mitts today. Have him you don't even have off. a... I didn't have a catcher's mitt. He's like, you can use my catcher's mitt. I'll see you outside in 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't even think I had a cup. I don't think I was wearing a cup when I played the infield. Is it weird that when Goldberg w wore those underwear that it looked like he had a catcher's mitt? <laughs> no, you're talking about the longest yard, right? <laughs> there you go, the, the hammer, the hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was good, Bill. That was good. Here's a good one. Uh, the reason why Adam gave me that part is because I almost killed him for not putting me in his Hanukkah song. Like, for real. Sandler. Yeah, Adam. So, I think out of fear that he gave me that cool part in the longest year. If you did, if you did to him what you just did to me, yes, I would put you in anything he wanted. Then maybe it worked. And lo and behold, the next, the next song came out and I was in it. Yeah, you better put my ass in there. So I made it. Poking me over here. I'm in the WWE Hall of Fame and I'm on Adam Sandler's Hanukkah song. I'm done. He made it. And you're on Steve Trevino's podcast. There you go. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with Jose. With Jose yeah. Trevino, yes. Yeah. So, could, so this is minor leagues, right? Yeah, this is the minor leagues. This is in Spokane, Washington. I sucked, dude. I was so bad. As a catcher. But why dude, did they I do that? I was so bad. Because um, you were so good. Well, they, they wanted thought, to you. They had the projections. So they were like, oh, he has good leadership qualities. He has good hands. All that kind of stuff. And they were like, let's throw him back there. So I went back there. Oh, man, I was miserable. <laughs> I played, I think we played 60-something games. The first half of the season was 33 games. I caught like seven. 
And then we flip around to like the second half, and there was like 34 games, and I caught probably 30. Wow. Miserable. I suck. Like my teammates would come up to me and be like, "Dude, like we need you to get better." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." Even the next year, the next year, yeah, I don't so think you're gonna make it. Guy. I, was, I was just, I was just telling the story uh, to Mr. Goldberg, Bill. Don't hurt Call me. me, Bill. Don't, don't hurt me. <laughs> don't hurt me. So then uh, I, I got my signing bonus. I built a batting cage. I bought a pitching machine. And I was like, I'm not going to suck again at this. And just like he said, just like he was like, if I'm going to go out there, I'm going to be the best I can be. That's what I did. And sure enough, the next year, the same teammates that were telling me I sucked were like, dude, what the hell did you do? And I'm like, little do you know, man. So. Yeah, it's time again. we got to give something away. What? Yeah. Yes. Where's it's our, time, where's it's the time to uh, uh, do the raffle, right? Okay. We got our friends, our friend, oh, at, there they are. our friend Stetson Frost. From the Lane Frost brand, Baby please dog. look them up. Uh, they're giving away. We're gonna give away a hundred dollar gift card. Blue There's ticket. the tickets. Blue ticket or red ticket? And we're also giving a hundred dollar gift card to what's what's K and N? No, 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 no. We're giving filter. away one ticket no. is for the Lane Frost gift card, and another ticket is for a Rowell Western a Rowell Western wear shirt. Okay, so the blue ticket is our veterans, and the other ticket is general public. Hundred dollar Lane Frost Frost brand gift card. Here's our veteran number. Give it you to Bill. It, you got it. One zero six eight nine zero four. Where you at? Bring it on, my man. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> sir. Ladies that and gentlemen, insane. Purple Heart recipient. Ladies and gentlemen. Nice. And then in the back, back here, we have a bunch of Rowell Western Wear shirts. Oh, make set sure up. you go get a Rowell Western Wear shirt, my friend. Go get a Rowell shirt from us. This one is the one that gets to choose the shirt. Oh, they get to choose they the shirt. Here we go. You can have an extra microphone if you want. One, oh. two, one, eight, four, nine, eight. One, two, one, eight, four, nine, eight. Red ticket. Red ticket. Anybody, check your tickets. Dr. Z, you don't need uh, free stuff. We got a oh, winner right there. Right there. Give her a round of applause. Winner, winner, chicken Took a little while to... Find that number. Yeah, it took a little while to find the number. Okay. Where's it? What's that place? You can go on to the back and pick out right a shirt. Beautiful hat. Give her hat a round of applause. <laughs> no, we believe you. Also a veteran. Also a veteran. A female veteran. Beautiful. Oh, Foy, I can't wait to give away your gift, buddy. Uh, my friends at, at Foy cut, ki cut, kissed them. Custom. Foy oh, kit. man. Foy kit. Foy kit Customs in Canyon Lake gave us amazing things, man. I can't wait to give that away. All right, so, Jose, let's continue. So then you're in the oh, minor leagues. Man. You get drafted to where? Uh, sixth round of the Rangers, and then I went from Spokane, Washington, to Hickory, North Carolina. Hickory? Yeah. To yeah. Hickory? Yeah. yeah. Were there Hicks in Hickory? Invited a few to my game. North yeah, Carolina. Cool. Yeah. 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 So then I went from... Played full season there, and then I went to High Desert, California. Miserable place, but one of the funnest times ever. It was some of the memories I have there will be with me forever. <laughs> Teammates too. Yeah. So, uh, and then the, after that, uh, Double A in Frisco, and then I uh, I made my debut that year. Texas then, Rangers. Texas Rangers. June fifteenth. Uh, yeah, that that's crazy. I, you know, Bill. Crazy. I was telling Jose like <laughs> his his career. Imagine your whole life, you work hard to be a baseball player, you get drafted into the pros, a year later, what happens? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a baby. Had, had a, baby, a baby, but COVID. Baby, COVID. Uh, yeah, oh, did. no, 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 okay, so then I, 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 my son was actually born June 10th, and then I made my debut five days later. Wow. So that was like, my son no, knows nothing but big league fields. He's kind of <laughs> spoiled. And then um, that was 18, and then we playing 19. And then 2020 hits, and it's like, all right, what are we going to do? So we had a few catchers on the roster, and they had to make some moves. And uh, I got sent down for a little bit and then got picked back up, and they were like, hey, like, you know, this is, this is your show now for, for, 20, for the rest. I think it was like 20-something games did well, and then 2021 turned around, which was uh, last year, uh, and played well. Had some good defensive uh, metrics and offensive metrics. And but what I love about you too, man, is you're such a Texas boy. You did not want to leave the state. I didn't. I really, I, I honestly, like, that was probably one of the hardest days, April 2nd, when I got traded in New York, one of the hardest days, because I, there you go, there you go, there you go. Probably one of the best. Were you not so scared? Because New Yorkers no, are I was, brutal. I was, They're going to No, 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 I was freaking out. You. 
because I come from a town probably like eight eight, people, eight people, and my family's seven of them. Yeah, they're all your cousins. Like, so I had no clue like what was gonna happen. So um, I just remember saying bye to all my teammates, and then I had a big beard too. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna shave this thing, and then I'm gonna go to New York, and I'm just gonna be myself. And the rest is history, man. Wow. Platinum glove this year, ladies and gentlemen. Platinum glove. Platinum. It's funny, I, I, have, I have a video, Gage, Gage is a catcher, and I have a video of Gage, the first game that he ever caught, and I'm picturing that as you, the first game you ever caught, and Gage did this. He literally, his glove was here, and the ball hit him right in the chest. He never yeah. moved his glove one bit. He never moved anything. It just yeah. hit him in the chest, and he looked down. Yeah. I can picture that. No, I got, I, one time I went down to block a ball. You won't believe this. I went down to block a ball, and it was supposed to be a curveball. The guy actually threw a fastball, hit me right in the head. <laughs> the ball just poof. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be rough. This is going to be rough. Hey, check this out. The first bullpen, first big league bullpen I ever caught in front of, like, big league pitchers and everything. I went down to block a ball, and it hit, like, a piece of turf. And I like turned away from it because I was scared shitless of blocking. <laughs> right. And it hit me right in my <laughs> neck, dude. And I was like, no, man, I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> it was hard, dude. I got, I got my butt kicked for a while. Like, I don't like this. I don't want to yeah. do something else. And then, I, and then somebody was like, dude, that thing on your chest, you can use that. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so I, I, got a there, question. Right? I got a question for you. So you're, on, you're playing on national television. <clears throat> and you misread the ball or it's a bad pitch and it hits you in the nuts. How do you play it off? You don't. You can't. You just got to go with it? You can't. Like, cup, cup I've, been hit, I've been hit a lot. Like, I've been hit a lot. And like, Can we see your the nuts? First, the first thing, <laughs> no. Uh, oh. She said no. She said no. <laughs> Marky's like, no, no, no. Not yet. That's his beautiful wife, which, yeah. by the way, like me and Renee from his hometown, Texas girl. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. But yeah, I've been, hit, I've been hit a lot. The worst ones are the foul tips. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, and I get I get hit in some areas like I can't explain. Like I'll be like, why, why does that hurt when I sit down? And I'm like, ah, I got hit with a foul ball there. Oh my God, Fomunda. Well, I think it, yeah. you're, I you're on it. You're on it. You're on it. I know. But I think the, I think your moment this year was the All Star game. Yeah, it was fun, dude. That was your breakout. that was uh, nice. that was fun, man. We I watched uh, every play. I uh, I actually so I'll share this with y'all. Like I almost didn't go. Like I wasn't as healthy as I wanted to be because I knew that and when you go when you play in New York man like it's like it's a whole different beast it's it's you win like you're expected to win you're supposed to win you have to win and for me my health was like I was like man I got my I was getting my ass kicked foul balls whatever all the other injuries that I had and I was like man I don't know if I want to go but it took a lot of people to be like no you need to go it's your first all-star game and thankfully like it was an experience I'll never forget for sure like my family being there and like the red carpet and like being mic'd up with the Nestor. microphone yeah, 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 that was that, dude that was, that was like, so that, cool, that stuff man. was really cool because they asked us they're like hey does anybody want to get a mic on and i'm like you never see a microphone on a catcher like put me on a mic i got y'all like i'll do it <laughs> and i actually wasn't even supposed to so what everybody liked was the the hitting part i wasn't even supposed to do that talking all kinds so, of shit I yeah so, it. Check, Great, so check man. it out so i go up to catch i catch Nestor, and i was actually on deck and they were like hey do you still want the mic and like we'll take it and i was like no leave it on me and I actually saw Jason Bateman. Is that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no. So I said, I was like, excuse my language if there's kids here. I was walking up on deck and I go, holy shit, it's Marty Bird. Yeah, like, it was a big like, I was like, holy shit. I was like, holy shit, it's Marty Bird. And, and I thought I was on national television when I said that. I was like, oh my God. Like, I was like, oh, what's up, man? How's it going? He's just like, hey, man, nice to meet you. And I couldn't remember his name at the time. Just Marty Bird. <laughs> just Marty Bird. He was Marty Bird to me. And then I went up and obviously like. The rest, you know, the hit and all that stuff. I should have went to second. That was but yes. My mic, my mic was floating around. I was scared. I, I just think nervous. that I just think that you made us all feel. Yeah, that's what, what I wanted it, to what do. What it man. must feel yeah. like to yeah. be in that moment. That's what I want to do. I mean, I, like you said, I represent. I, I represent South Texas. Like my heart is in Texas. Like, like I love. I love Texas. I love where I live. I love where I'm at. I, I, I try to represent Texas, especially South Texas. Well, I remember, I remember yeah. Jose calls me up. He's like, bro, I'm lonely. I miss home. Can you come visit me? And I go, man, I'll see if I can work it out. He's like, but don't forget Whataburger. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, you don't want me there. You want a Whataburger. Yeah, that's what I want. That's, yeah. what, that's what you Maybe want. Maybe that's what we should do. We should put a Whataburger somewhere up there. We need to, yeah, well, Mahomes yeah. is putting Whataburgers in uh, Kansas City. Kansas City. Yeah, come on. Got to get that Mahomes <laughs> money. Oh. 
No, no, there's a couple more. I was, born, I was born in Oklahoma. I lived in California for 18 years. I moved to Texas, and now I own over 200 guns. I love this place. Yeah. yeah. God bless Texas. Yep. Well, and, and a lot of people don't know this about you, Bill. You're a, you're a car nut, specifically Dodge. And tell us about your show that you're, you're, you're starting to get together out there at your, at your compound. Well, your, your uh, wife told me it's called the Reject Ranch. Yeah, my wife. Uh, everybody, give a hand to my wonderful, beautiful wife. wife. Give her a round of applause. Yep. Please. Um, yeah, I'm not the star at the Goldberg House. The fact is, is that we have uh, a, a faction on our 200 acres called Reject Ranch, and it consists of uh, a couple uh, kangaroos, a zebra, Just some normal lemurs. Shit. You know, uh, miniature I goats, told him about you. miniature donkeys, fainting goats. Those were a gift for humor, <laughs> by the way. No, seriously, 100%. Father's Day. I wanted them just so I could chase them and watch them Make fall him down and laugh. <laughs> he almost made me faint right now. He put his hand on me. I'm telling you. He's a fainting human. They're like, sir, that's not a fainting goat. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking you, man. <laughs> you asked for it. It's your fault. I never, I, I would never do that. But, yeah, I mean, uh, the animals, uh, dude, I fly out and I go, N go do NCIS in L.A. and have to live among those morons out in California again. <laughs> you know, why not come back and be entertained by everything that breathes on your ranch? That's it's, awesome. It's, yeah. it's hilarious. Well, it's and, it's and, hard and I... living here, and it's the reason why I moved to, to Texas. Obviously, my son, uh, our son, is a, an athlete. He's a baseball player. He's a football player. We wanted to move to where the best competition was. Uh, like I said, I grew up in Oklahoma. My dream, not nobody knows this, but my dream was to go to UT. Okay? Ooh. As, as a, a kid growing up in Oklahoma, my dream was, was to go school. to the enemy, which was UT. And I went that's so your Austin. personality, oh, dude. 100%. Yeah. Like, and I went to you. Austin. Yeah. I'm going to UT. I went to Austin on an official visit, and I don't think anybody here is old enough to remember, but there was a guy named Coach Akers there, and he was the biggest prick I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life. And that's what kept me from going to UT, and I went to Georgia. But, you know, the, that was the only reason why I, I really wanted to go to UT. But you had your pick. Oh, I had my pick, 100%. I, I could do whatever I wanted. That, I mean, I was recruited by a lot of different schools. I was very lucky. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I met Akers, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to go play football for you. For you. I wouldn't run, run through a wall for you. I would do that for Coach Dooley. But I, there's no way. I didn't respect the guy. So um, at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, uh, we wanted to move to a place uh, in the United States that had the best people. So that's where we are. And that's, that's why we moved here. And that's what you call a baby face move right there. Yeah, well, <laughs> and speaking of great people, Bill, just so you guys know, at the door alone, we are at over $20,000 for our veterans. At the door alone. Well, speaking of good people, Bill, you ready to give something away? Let's Santa go. Bill? Let's, Let's do go. It. Give Bill, give Bill a ticket, honey. Where are the tickets? Here we right go. There. Red or blue, red or blue, red or blue. Both. We're doing both. both. Okay. Give it away, honey. Tell everybody. We're a $100 K&N gift card. And then what else? Oh. oh, and they get to pick a Ralph shirt. Does that mean they have both? They bought two they tickets? Win. They win twice. Oh, or somebody you, tried to be aggressive it? about it. Break them in no, half. Put them back in. They're different ones. Yep. Okay. There's the there's blue one. The blue one is veterans. This is a gift card. One zero six eight nine one three. And then a Rao Western Wear shirt, one, two, one, eight, five, one, five. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Blue Come ticket, on one, zero, six, eight, nine, one, three for a veteran. Is that him coming to the stage? Woohoo! There he is, yes. my dude. Nice. Give our veteran a round of applause, please. And the Rao Western Ooh. Wear shirt, one, two, one, eight, five, one, five. Yep, Jose Trevino would like to give you an autographed baseball. Bill will also Thank give you, you yeah, an autographed on. headshot. Give our veteran one more big round Thank of applause, please. Thank, Thank you, my friend. Hey. Nice to meet that you. That was Thank a you gift card. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hey, I know it would raise some money. What? I bet you people would pay a lot to see you get speared right now. Uh, yes. <laughs> I will. Uh, 
I was thinking about that. Let me like, try it. Let me try it on you. You want to spear me? <laughs> I, I was thinking, okay. You I was got like, the couch. Maybe he can teach us the technique. You got the couch. Okay, hold on real quick. Put your hand next to Bill's hand. Dude, no. Why would I do Just that? Just put your Why hand. Do that? Dude, look at this thing. <laughs> Dude, he laughed. It just makes you think what everything else looks like. <laughs> the hammer. The hammer. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I can say. The hammer. All right, so Bill. Sir. Okay, in wrestling, don't they do like those, those chops? They do a chop, yeah. I, I will, when, I will, when, when, when you're a female, men punch. I will let you Ooh, do... I like that not one. A, I like that okay. one. I will let you do a wrestling punch on me. How about that? I got a better idea. How about, how about I pick you up in an airplane spin? Okay. Do we got to move so this? Does this have to move? Do we got to move this? Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. I, didn't, I didn't realize you were a heavyweight before I said that. Does this move? That's not, that's not light. That's heavy. I just tried to move that thing. Ah! Ah! There's dude, flies in here, ladies. Dude, don't and get hurt. Please don't get hurt, dude. Let don't me get see, hurt. Let me see that right there. I can pick you up and get that right there. Anything you want to do to him while I got him? Okay, everybody count the, the revolution. Hey, don't turn around. Oh, there you go, that's better. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> made that look so easy. What a great participant. <laughs> I've been drinking, Bill. Me too. Did you see me spinning? Holy shit. That was not, it was fun, but not fun. At the same I'm time. the guy who had to do all the work. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's not fun. Well, no, he, the crazy part is, hey, wh who was the guy, I'll never forget, you picked him up over your head and you shoulder pressed him. How many times? Who was it? 12, Scott Steiner. It's not like I'm not Ooh. proud of it or He's anything. No, uh, no, 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 the big show, the big show, the big show. No, I jackhammered him. Jack hey, here's a, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Uh, <clears throat> house shows were non-televised events. And we'd go, we'd, we'd do Monday night Nitro, and then we'd do Thursday Thunder. But in between, we'd drive to the various cities and do house shows. <clears throat> well, on this certain circuit were myself and the big show, which is Paul White, the seven foot, 525 pound <laughs> giant. And it was, uh, the main event uh, uh, was he and I. Hold on, just a tail of the tape. Yeah. At this time, you're how tall and how much do you weigh? Six, three, 300. You were 300? Yeah. And 50 pounds was all neck. Main, mainly, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but the funny part was, is, was that <laughs> The giant hated being upside down. Like, I was the only person that ever could pick him up. By so, the way, I'm dying laughing. So, what we Sir, would do... I don't want to be upside down. What we would do is I would pick this dude up, and I would hold him as long as I possibly could. Like, my eyes would pop out before I'd let him down. Because it was so funny, because he was squeezing me the whole time, yelling at me to put him down. <laughs> And I mean, it's the only way I can get a 500 pound, seven foot dude to like cry mommy, right? And so I got him upside down, walking him around for minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, that was, that's, that's some infight, inside info. That's, that's inside info. Good. So, can we get an exclusive? Can you tell us something today? I just did. In addition to that, that no, you've never told in public. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a free agent in two weeks. And uh, this is no bullshit. Wow, and I was not ready for that. I'm going to be a free agent in two weeks. And I've, I've been wrestling, you know, for a couple years, 
back on my latest comeback. And I did it for these two wonderful people over here, my wife and my son. And I'm about to have my 56th birthday. And so, I mean, I'm getting like really old, especially for running around in your underwear in front of millions of people. But what people don't know is that my last match, uh, I did a favor for Vince McMahon because I had, I had COVID when he called me. And three weeks later- and I you are high risk, you're 56. So. Yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he didn't have anyone to wrestle Roman Reigns in Saudi Arabia in last February. Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah. yeah, and so I made a, made a deal with him, and he promised me one more match, one more final deal after Roman. Ooh. And then most of us know what happened. I wrestled Roman, and then Vince got fired. So I have no one more match thing in my deal. Wow. And it's done in two weeks. And I'm pretty much assuming that they're not going to do anything. So here, I'm going to break it, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I'm, I'm Jewish, quite honestly and obviously. I've never been to Israel. And so my retirement match is going to be in a frickin' stadium in Israel. Oh. Oh, dude, sick. <laughs> and I'm doing that on my own away from the WWE, unless, you know, they come to me and want to do something and, that I like, but I write my frickin' ending. No, no one else. Right? Good for you, Bill. Sure. So, so I sure. ain't going out like that, so you heard it here first. Yeah. yeah, wow. I think someone like him deserves that. I, like, a thousand percent. You know, you, you've given so many people so yeah. much entertainment, and the fun and the... the I mean, you know, when, when you hear the name Goldberg, people automatically know it's you. Yeah. So, or Whoopi. Or Whoopi, but, <laughs> but fuck that guy. Uh, you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can, we get, can we get Bill uh, another crown on the rocks, please? Oh, uh, I and, spilled it. And Bill, Sir. Let, let's give something else away. Hey, let's go. It's time. We have a photography session with oh. Kristen Johnston. Photography session with our photographer. A family yes. photo session. And, of course, a Rao shirt over there with our friends at Rao Western Wear. Right. For a vet and the photo session, 1068921. The good water. 1068921. Should I should have known. Are they here? Are they here? Blue ticket. Nobody. Next. Okay. I like your attitude. You're like, huh, who's next? Let's go. <laughs> One zero six eight nine one four. Oh. oh no! Anybody? One zero. Six yeah, we got him. Eight, nine, got friend from Aztec Chevrolet. <laughs> There's my dude. They All right. Right behind you. And if I could get Dave J to come to the stage here, Dave J, I want you to get your questions ready. We will answer any question you have for any of us. So if you are somebody that would like to ask a question. Well, not any question. Not any question, but. <laughs> most, most questions. Most 99%. And by the way, Jose, did you see the box of toys over there? Yeah, I did. Thank you. And did That's you see awesome. all of and these all the toys? toys? Yeah, this is. I don't what know how many get all this back. It's amazing, man. And we're going we're gonna to figure out a way yeah, no, I to help it. you out. Thank so, you. This one's for a Rao Thank Western you. Wear shirt. Rao Western Wear shirt. Red ticket. One, two, one. Eight six five eight. Anybody? Go, go get a shirt. We got more to give away. We still got lots. All right, folks. If you would like to ask a question, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Question, right here, my man. Come on up here, and the microphone's right here for you. Come on up here. Let's give away. Let's give away something else while he's walking up. No, you're fighting yet? No, we can't take the. Oh, he's in a that wheelchair. Well, choice. fuck, I feel like a dick now. I told him I'd fucking do it, yeah. <laughs> and I had COVID, yeah. and I hadn't even trained for three months. Come on over, my dude. Lie, but I went and did it. I'm like, okay, he's going to take Can care you of bring... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you come to him? Well, he doesn't have to walk. I'm good. All right, That's what's up. the question in for who? Uh, it's for Bill. Bill? Yes, sir. Uh, huge fan for a couple decades now. What's your favorite match you ever wrestled in? 
um, that, that I got, be more specific, that I got like the most enjoyment out of? You enjoyed the most, yeah. My favorite match uh, was against Hogan, but not for the reason you think. My favorite match was against Hollywood Hogan. The first time I had the opportunity to win the heavyweight championship, I beat Scott Hall earlier in the night. I'd only been in the business six months. The best thing was that I played in the first football game at the Georgia Dome, and I got to wrestle in front of 45,000 people on a Monday night in the Georgia Dome as Goldberg when they were cheering for me as the football player. And I beat Hogan, but that doesn't even compare to why it was the coolest part. And you're gonna love this. Yeah. As I said before, and anybody who knows anything about me, I live and die football. I am a football player till the day I die. And all I ever wanna do is play in the NFL. And uh, I got lucky enough to play for a couple years and then I got really lucky to wrestle for the championship that night in front of all my fans who were there when I was playing with the Falcons. At the end of the night when we went off the air, after I beat Hogan, the NWO beat the shit out of me. Yeah. And they, they handcuffed me to the turnbuckle. And then the Falcons saved me. Oh, that's sick. Wow. That's awesome. All the dudes that I used to play football with. They came out in their gear and they frickin' saved me. And I'm in the turn, I'm in the corner, and you know I'm getting whatever now. Uh, but man, it, it 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 touched me because the only thing I ever wanted to do was be them. And for that minute, they all wanted to be fucking me. Yeah, that's it. That's right? That's awesome. So awesome. That's badass. That's. It had nothing to do with Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> it was all my, my, my idols thought enough about what I did at the time to be involved. And so thank you for asking that. Question. Well, that That's takes awesome. me to um, a Jose story, your favorite home run. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, my, like, well, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a fan, you know for sure. But yeah, my, da my dad's birthday, uh, definitely in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, dude, I remember I was struggling too. I was struggling for a little bit, and I actually I had a I had an appearance that morning at the uh, at the major league like baseball store and like they showed me around and stuff. So it was, I was up at like 6:30 that morning. I had a game at night, uh, and I didn't even realize like my dad my dad's favorite player was Mickey Mantle, and I always kept this uh, coffee cup with me in New York. I actually bought it off a dude on eBay, and I like sent a big old letter to the dude. I was like, thank you so much, like. You don't know how much this coffee cup means to me. Like, and so like, as I was getting up for that morning, I made a cup of coffee. I drank, I drank it, and I was on my way to the MLB studio, and I was like, I feel like weird today. Like, oh, and then I, I, a couple hours later, I'm like, oh, today's my dad's birthday. And I was like, oh, okay. And I, I remember I texted my sister. I was like, today's dad's birthday, right? And she's like, yeah. And dude, I mean, I had like the longest day. I, I remember like walking through New York City and be like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this game. And sure enough, like, I mean, we were facing Baltimore, and, and I, I, obviously it was, it was special because end up obviously end up hitting a homer, right? Like a changeup. I remember, like, seeing it out of his hand. <laughs> and I hit it. It was my first homer at Yankee Stadium. I was, like, pumped, dude. Like, it was – I hit it, and, like, balls usually don't travel that far in that area of the stadium. <laughs> and when and you I, hit it? I, I touched it, dude. I hit it, and Boom. I was, like – I think I got that one. I gave like a little Sammy Sosa hop too, so I was like, <laughs> I think I got that one. I think I got it. And sure enough, like it landed. And I remember the first thing after I touched home plate, I was like, I talked to security. I said, hey, I need that freaking ball, dude. Like, tell them not to throw. I need that ball. Like, that ball means a lot. And sure enough, like later on the game, uh, I'm hot. I'm getting a couple hits. I think it's like the seventh inning. We got a runner on second. Uh, we're down one. And I end up getting like, this dude's like blowing me up with heaters. I'm like, shit. This guy's going to punch my ticket from all these people. Sure enough, like, get, like, a cheap base hit to right, tie the game. And then we just play extra innings. And then all of a sudden, I'm, like, walking around the dugout. And I'm, like, oh, boy, get me, get me somebody in scoring position. This thing's over. This thing is you over. You knew it. And sure enough, like, I remember slider out of his hand, right down the line. And I was, like, that's it. Done. Nice. Done. So, yeah. yeah. Everything happens for a reason. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Good did, we, uh, yeah. did we get did we get Bill another crown on the rocks? Yeah. Yeah. Did we get him one? All right, we got another question from a young fan. When did you start Major League Baseball? Ooh, when did I start Major League Baseball? In my head, I was probably a little <laughs> younger than you. <laughs> a little younger than you, but uh, no, man, I was, uh, I got my call up in 2018, but as a kid, uh, your age, I always had dreams of being a big leaguer. I always had dreams of, of, of wanting to play in front of thousands of fans. And honestly, like to be quite honest, I always had dreams of playing in Yankee Stadium for the New York Yankees, winning a World Series for the New York Yankees. So, I mean, I was your age, man. So just keep dreaming and keep, keep having fun. Like, it's so much fun. I go, yeah, never too young. I go, I go out there and, and, and Bill can tell you and Steve can tell you, but like, those the people you, you there's some nights you walk out there I walk out there some nights and I, I text my wife too I'm like I don't know how I'm gonna like physically I don't know how I'm gonna get through this game but all of a sudden you got a light a light shines on and the people are in their seats and the people are chanting your name and it's it, you don't feel anything you just go out there and you play so it's a good feeling man it's a good feeling thank yeah. you yeah, 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 yeah. here you go you can take this home with you there you go yeah yeah, yeah. there you go Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Iago, what you got, buddy? Uh, do you miss playing shortstop? <laughs> do you miss Do you miss playing shortstop? Do That's I a really play, good question. Do I miss playing shortstop? Yes and no. I like I like what I do now because I I was actually telling some people in the back like, first off, I'm not that good looking anymore. True uh, that. True that. But I get to I get to put on a mask. I get to put on a mask every night and just turn into like a different person. Like I, I, I get to like, you know, embrace what I get to do back there behind home plate. I get to take control of the game. Uh, at shortstop, shortstop's cool, you can make some cool plays, but I think, uh, I think a lot of people are starting to appreciate the catch position. But yeah, sometimes I do, sometimes. Hey Bill, sure. what's the over under on who this guy's gonna ask a question to? <laughs> Well, I'll go with the uh, under. <laughs> Come on over. Thanks, guys. Uh, Bill, first, not a question, but a comment. I had two uh, people that quiet, I really guys, looked, quiet, quiet. really looked up to hairstyle-wise. It was Jason Newstead from Metallica when I actually could grow hair, and it was you when I couldn't. So I just want to say thank you for the hairstyle. My you know pleasure, the brother. You, you know what the crazy part is? You have the same physique. I mean, it's amazing. So, I mean, you guys... <laughs> So if you need a, uh, an opponent for Israel, just yes. I'm there, dude. Let's go. I'm there. I think you could take him, Bill. I don't know. I don't know. Watch it. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> Jose, love you, man. I just you know I'm a Yankee fan, bleed, bleed Yankee blue. Aaron's coming back. Time to win number 28. What do you think our chances are this year? Oh man, it's gonna be good. Uh, obviously, we're not done in free agency, uh, and obviously getting. The captain back. I'm going to start calling the captain because it's happening sooner or later. Good. Let's go. Let's yeah, let's go. So hopefully hopefully tomorrow uh, they, they announce that or something, like, but he deserves it. Uh, and then having him back is huge. And then adding to our pitching staff with, uh, with um, Rodon, Rodon is, is, is huge. So I, I don't think we're done yet in free agency, so keep your eye out. But, yeah, let's go get 28. All right. Awesome. Hey, guys, we're only, gonna do, we're only doing two more questions, guys. Two more. Love you guys. Next two guys. Two more questions. We're doing three. I got one real quick. Uh, <laughs> how many games do you guys play in a year? Uh, not including playoffs, 162. How the hell do you keep your intensity like at game 90, knowing that if you're even at the bottom of, this, of the standings, it doesn't matter because at the end of the year. You, you know what? I'll tell you the truth. The kid that was on his dad's shoulders, yeah. when he buys a ticket that night, I want him to get the best show out of me. That's what I wanted you to say. Yes, sir. How you doing? My question is actually uh, for Mr. Bill Goldberg. Yes, sir. Uh, so you made reference to a, video, uh, a VHS uh, tape. Actually, I had that tape. <laughs> and that was my introduction <laughs> to you, sir. And uh, this was at the height of the whole uh, Monday Night Wars, you know, Nitro versus yes. Raw. And, uh, but I remember when you first came out, uh, very silent. 
silent. You know, there was no talk. I remember you actually made a comment about disco. Guys like disco were all show, but I'm um, action. I remember that. And I, that, that, that tells you how often I, I, I watch that video tape. Right. <laughs> But my question is actually, uh, I've always been fascinated with, uh, with the business ever since uh, Mick Foley's autobiography. And um, so uh, I'm actually just kind of curious about the uh, development of the, uh, the microphone aspect of the, of the performance. You know, well, apart from I, the physicality, but I, then the mic skills. I'm quite obviously still working on the mic aspect of it. But, you know, my deal was this. Um, if you are a force to be reckoned with, you don't need to tell people about what you're about to do to them. You just need to do it, and it speaks volumes. Um, that and one of my idols was Bruiser Brody. Okay? Texas boy, right? Texas championship wrestler. I used to watch it with my grandma every Saturday, right? I did, I swear to God. God, I miss her. Brody didn't, Brody didn't say a lot. I knew that. Uh, I, I just, I'm really, I, I, that aspect of it what didn't interest me. I wasn't uh, a man on the mic by any stretch of imagination. I, I mean, I... But you did eventually. I did eventually because I had to eventually. Right. But I, I just felt as though... But don't you think that that was some of the allure? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, right? me, I mean, well, you know, I, I, I was a big fan as a kid and went away from it, but then I was drawn back in right about that attitude era. Um, Less is more. That's my attitude. Look at my, look at my gear. Less is more. I mean, I just felt like <laughs> if I go out there and smash people and they think I'm it's gonna real. I'm going to keep the joke. I'm not going to make a joke there. No, no, no it was right. effective. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to go quickly. I so had his action figure, too. <laughs> but I, I just felt as though if I was as realistic as humanly possible, I didn't need to say a word. Wonderful. Thank I, lo I love you. that about it, man. I, I love the, 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 the appearance and the you coming out. I was out, just different. You know, right. Everyone right. always wanted to talk about themselves and about do all these moves. Man, I just did two of them and left. <laughs> I mean, you know. It's like our sex life. <laughs> like I said, one of them and left. Two, no. two moves and I'm out. <laughs> Come on up here, my friend. Uh, yeah, this question's for Bill. I'm just curious if you ever got your brother-in-law back for punking you out with R.D. Mercer. Uh, you know, um, yes, I did get him back. And I had no idea who Roy D. Mercer was at that time. And I'll tell you, I, was, I remember it like it was like, yes, well, like three seconds ago. I was in Dawsonville, Georgia, playing for the Falcons. And I get this phone call. And the day before, I was at Goldie's Hamburgers, right? Remember Goldie's in Tulsa? So I was at Goldie's and I was walking from my car to the restaurant and somebody asked me to, to sign their baby. And I'm like, what? You, yeah. Like sign my baby. Somebody like, from Corpus might I'll sign you your, I'll, I'll, I'll sign a piece of paper or in a book or a photo, but your baby, nah, I'm good. And so I did. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my, my, my best friend was with me, and his brother-in-law was Roy D. Mercer. So he called and told him that story. The next day, I get a phone call. Hey, Goldberg there? Yeah, this is me. Uh, we got a problem. I can't do the Roy D. Mercer thing, but when he said that, you know, I'm like alluded that he was going to sue me, I wanted to rip this dude's face off. So I'm like, here's my address. Come to my house. Bring whoever you want. I'm going to kill you, right? <laughs> and so when he started saying... Just so you know, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. yeah, you know, just FYI, I'm going <laughs> to kill you when you get here. No, but when he starts talking about pulling stuff out of his tights, and I know that stuff's fake, and I'm like, this is not... This, is, this isn't well, good, and, and, right? And by the way, what people don't know about Bill is he also trains Muay Thai. I do that too. So he's a very dangerous man. But... He nailed me, and I had no idea who he was. And then I become uh, very famous for being on that recording. But you know, it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. I th what was even funnier is they they sent me a letter and they wanted me to sign off on it, and they were going to pay me like royalties. It was like like thirty bucks. <laughs> I was like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" Right? I know how many this is going to sell. I'm not signing that. So. It was, it was, it's definitely something to talk about. No question. Awesome. Yes, I got his ass back. 
Hey guys, we're almost done. Let's just keep it down for a little while longer. We're almost done. We got one more question. This question's for Bill. Um, 25 years ago, I saw you win the world title on WCW, and when was that these went on sale, five years ago? Shut up. When these shirts went on sale, I made my mom order it, and I remember I was being so giddy when it came in, and I only wore it once or twice because I didn't want to ruin it. Sign in, it, Bill. In hopes for this day to happen. And you, sir, are the inspiration why I work the independent scene, and my finisher is the spear because of you. Hell yeah! yeah. Come on up, man. Let me sign that thing. You got, you guys got. I gotta get him a sharpie. You got marker, a sharpie marker, marker. somewhere? Please. I usually carry one in my pocket, but oh, look at you! You got one. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, oh, man. It's a pleasure, man. I'm glad that I helped a little bit. You know. Sir. Here, make sure, make sure it works. Oh, we got, we got, we got. Make sure it works. Make sure it works. You've done this before, haven't you, kid? Thank you. It's happening now, ladies and gentlemen. That's there awesome. You go, Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, make sure you get a picture. You interrupt the show. Oh, for sure, man. No, don't, don't do that to I him. I got you, I got you. Give it to Steve. Ah. Let's do it like this. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. It's a pleasure, man. You kicked some ass. Thank you. Hey, carry it on. Yes, sir. All right, Bill, let's give, away, let's give away one more thing, and then we have something very special tonight. Pick them out, Jose. Me pick them, okay. What are, we away? what are we giving away, honey? Tell us what we're giving away. We've got a $100 gift card to Compadres Hill Country Cocina. Hell yeah! I ate there this afternoon. It is arguably the best restaurant on the planet. I need to go. I haven't eaten no there yet. No question. I'm going. Okay, go. the $100 gift card is for 106 8916. Nothing. One, zero, hey, wait, six, hold on. They've been wanting something all eight, night. Here, y'all yes. can have one of these. Here, you can have one of these. Here, you can have one of these. They've been wanting something all night. I hate to tell. I, I actually signed it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blue one. One zero six eight nine one six. Oh, right there. There you go. And a Ral Western Wear shirt for one two one eight five zero eight. And then, Bill, if, if, I hate to do this to you, but can I ask you to do me a favor real quick? Yes, sir. Can you give up your microphone? Guys, I have one more thing. I would like to introduce our friends from Big Country Veterans. Come on up here. Uh, you can use Bill's microphone. Here you go, well, Give them a round of applause, please. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Cody, if you, could, if you could tell me yeah. a little bit about what you do with veterans. Sure, absolutely. So Big Country Veterans brings... Quiet, please. Kind of our mission in life is to bring veterans in to help them conquer and their families conquer life after combat. We focus on combat veterans, specifically Special Forces operators. Um, and kind of like what you're involved in, you know, our flagship event is actually a helicopter hog hunt. But what's interesting is that hunt necessarily doesn't get them out. It's bringing these guys out like that and kind of vouching for it to come out every year because our focus is the time off the helicopters or anything. And it's about getting these guys out, finding what's really they're struggling with, and then continuing that. And that's, that weekend is actually just the start of becoming part of the BCV family is what we call it. And uh, then we kind of take them on our auxiliary hunts. We actually started up family retreats this year. You know, we're trying to really dive in and see what how we can help these guys out the most. Like, and, and we're listening to them, and that's how we're building it. And, that's how and, we're we, and we have together. a Purple Heart recipient with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we're, Mike and we're, yep. Yeah, so we have Mike Gorman here, a dear friend of mine now. He came to our event in 2021. And what we do is kind of create opportunities for you guys to come back and be a part of it with us, however they would like to. You know, we don't force it. We just say, hey, this is what we're doing. And we have these opportunities to do that and then kind of bring their families in and find that kind of purpose and passion again in life. Well, well and, and Cody, what a lot of people don't understand too is with these combat vets, a lot of them are missing limbs. Yeah, absolutely. Are, they're in wheelchairs, so my big question to you is, when you take them hunting, it's gotta be a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. So our main event is done in Truscott, Texas. I don't know if anybody knows where that's at, but Yellowstone's pretty big, so it's really only a few miles from the four sixes, if you guys, 
And so you can imagine the terrain out there. And these guys have always just been studs as far as So, so hold help. on, let me stop you right there. So the big challenge is these guys in wheelchairs that yeah. you have a hard time getting out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, us at Helicopters for Heroes, I think we solved your problem. We are, we are donating a $25,000 track what? chair for you and your hunters. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's going to be fun. I don't even know what to say. I mean, that's going to mean so much to these guys. I think we just broke the mic. That is, uh, that is for you to take for your organization so that the boys that want to go hunting can. Us at Helicopters for Heroes and the Independent Fund want you and your organization to have it. Congratulations. Here, I'll take the mic. I'll take the mic. I'll take the mic. I'll take the mic. Congratulations, guys. Independent Fund, thank you so much for donating the chair. Helicopters for Heroes. Yes. So hang tight. Uh, hang, you're going to hang around tonight. I want to make sure that we all get a photograph with you. Man, I, I, I know it's uh, one of those, <laughs> but I hope, I hope Bill, myself, my wife, Jose, we got to get a picture of those boys out there hunting, man, because these guys want to hunt, they want to fish and they want to be out there. And sometimes you can't get them out there. This will help my friend. So congratulations. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, final thoughts, and the podcast is about to be over. But I, I, I hope that you guys, I hope that you guys don't leave because we are right now at about twenty-five thousand. My goal tonight is forty. We have some live auction items that me, Jose, and Bill would like to help you uh, help sell, and hopefully you guys will open up your hearts and your wallets and help us hit that forty thousand. Because when I met Bill and I found out the passion he had for veterans was the same passion I had, man. We immediately became really good friends. Jose, his heart for his community and his ability to raise these gifts for these people. And when I asked him if we could keep these gifts in Comal County, he said yes. So give all these guys a round of applause, please. And let me, let me add to that, okay? You know, uh, the, we're extremely lucky to have done what we have done and to continue to do what we do. And there are some foolish people in the world who look up to us. But the fact is, is that the men and women who serve our country and who put their lives on the line are our true heroes. And I don't say it because I want applause and I don't say it because I want thank yous and I say it because uh, it's the most important thing on the planet because none of us in this room would be able to do what we do if it wasn't for them. None of us. And so, you know, to live in a place that, that reveres our veterans in such a high esteem, it's, a truly, it's truly an honor to be friends with guys and girls like this that do events like this, that thank the people who really matter. It's a true honor. So for every one of you who have come out tonight, and given us your time and, and donated. Thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. We, we really yeah. appreciate it. And by the way, while I have you and Jose on the spot, can we do this every year? And can we raise more and more money every year? Hell yeah. I'm in. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, Miss Renee, I will excuse you. Give my beautiful wife a round of applause, please. <laughs> 